Hello, everyone. So here we are on our channel getting ready to do another foot reading video. Uh, and we are officially live. So let's get to it. Um, we have another foot reading challenge that we did in the Facebook group. And let's talk about kind of what's in store for this uh, foot reading video. And share my screen and we will get to it. Okay, cool. So here we are, we are at the foot reading video. Uh, these are the feet that have been submitted for the challenge. Now, here's the funny thing is uh, each kind of foot reading challenge that we do is a little bit unique. So this one is no exception to that. Um, also, as you all join us, feel free to jump on the comment section and let me know that you're here and where from. Um, and also, if you're watching the replay, definitely let me know where you're watching from and if you like it. Uh, this pair of feet is going to teach us some things that I'm super excited to show you because I don't think that we've talked as dramatically about this subject uh, because there are things in these feet that do not necessarily seem as uh, kind of powerful until we start to look at them from all angles. And that is definitely what we are going to be doing today. So make sure that you follow me throughout the entire video because there is a twist uh, and I will leave it at that and let's get on to kind of what the video is about and how to follow along, okay? So the foot reading challenge um, is posted in the Frock group on Facebook. That's the Foot Reading and Reflexology online community. I get pictures of feet from all over the world and you all submit them and then I take the most amazing ones. Uh, they're all amazing, not to discount, but the ones that I feel display some of the core concepts of foot reading to teach you all how to read the feet. And we turn them into videos like this, but also the members get to jump on and talk about what they see in the feet. And then we get to compare and contrast through a video like this. Okay. So we're going to go over what I see. So the various markers, uh, what they mean, their location, and I'm going to circle them all for you. And then I'm going to talk about what I would say and what I would not say. So with each of the markers that I point out, uh, normally each video is different. This video, we're gonna stick with our top three. So the top three things that I personally would want to focus on during like a foot reading consultation. I know some of you who uh, have been following the channel have actually scheduled appointments with me where you Skype me in and we talk about the markers that are present, but we're not talking about every little crevice and bend in the bone. We're talking about the most dramatic. We're talking about the most flamboyant markers in the feet that really are the body trying to tell us, hey, focus here, focus here, focus here. Uh, and that is what we are going to really focus on. But also we're gonna talk about what doesn't make the cut in terms of the foot reading. Uh, and then what to do about it, which is so important, so important because like I said last video, and this has been a common trend, is it's not just what you see, it's what you coach the client to kind of make lifestyle changes with. Uh, and this consultative process with foot reading allows us as foot readers to really help the client move from point A to point B based on the body's guidance, which we are then interpreting via reflexology and foot reading theory. And that's kind of how it works. So we don't just want to say, hey, you're broken. We want to say, hey, this is how you fix it. Um, but then also being careful because we don't want to DPT diagnose, prescribe, or treat. Instead, we always want to ACE or assess, coach, and educate because we are not doctors, nor do we play one on TV. Instead, we are just reflexologists doing our thing, letting the body's wisdom shine through at all moments. Okay, context and the story. So let's, let's talk about this. So I'm gonna heavily drive home in this video, educating the client on their natural constitution. If you haven't been following the material, uh, feel free to grab my book, uh, join the Facebook group, uh, watch the other videos, and you'll pick up really quick. Constitution can be very, very powerful. Uh, somebody's base kind of body style, if you were, that we categorize easily as four, one of the four elements, either earth, air, fire, water, uh, can give you a huge idea as far as what somebody's natural tendencies are and explain to the client hey, if you've always had this set of symptoms, then this is why your body is just built that way. It's not that you're broken, but 
one size doesn't fit all in terms of lifestyle. So if you're trying to do what all of these other people are doing, if they don't have your body type, it's going to be irrelevant. Okay. Weaving feedback together is another thing that we're going to talk about in this particular video, because we have constitution and elemental themes that are going to go hand in hand. Uh, I'm going to really show you how to bridge and build your feedback so that you can get a better understanding as far as delivering clear and concise uh, kind of interconnected feedback as opposed to just, you know, picking things out here and there. Okay. And then the big twist is really going to come when we uh, explore the dorsal versus the uh, plantar surfaces of the feet. And this is something that we've touched in previous videos, but it is so dramatic, so dramatic in these feet. I cannot even tell you, which is why I'm saving uh, the view on the dorsal surface for last, because it's going to blow your mind. Okay. And that's really important. When people think of foot reading, they think of the soles of the feet. It is not just the soles of the feet. Instead, we are looking at the 360 view, uh, 3D model of the entire structure, which represents the entire system. So we can't uh, kind of exclude that other half. Okay, so now let's get to it. So these are the plantar views of this person's feet. Give you a second just to give them another quick once over look see uh there are a few things that we've talked about in other videos uh and you can really see them clearly now there are some things that uh i will not be addressing and first and foremost you can see very faintly that line uh that kind of cracking lining thing stuff just below the ball of the foot and in what we would call horizontal zone two vertical zone two in line with that second toe that's not as deep as I would like it. And there are other things that are deeper. Uh, and we will talk about that now. So speaking of deep, marker number one is weakness in the lower GI area and the family and relationship centers of the feet, which pretty much everybody in the group totally nailed. What I'd like to drive home though in the video is this is marker number one. This is priority number one. So when it comes to suggesting methods of balancing, this is going to be the thing that I am most concerned about. When we look at the other markers, this is the one that really strikes me as the most deficient, the most in need of bolstering, the most kind of cry for help. Uh, the rest, although some of the markers are quite dramatic, they are not as, let's see, they are not as in need as this area right here. Uh, and this is in horizontal zone four. So the way that we determine that is it is above the heel, above the plantar surface of the calcaneus, but then below the waistline guideline, which is made, and to throw out some anatomy, uh, by tracing the proximal head of the fifth metatarsal all the way across the foot, and it falls below uh, that metatarsal line. So that tells us that it is in the lower digestive reflexes, uh, but then also this is the center of family and relationships. Dryness, lining, and waves here indicates irritability, fatigue, exhaustion, the idea that both the physical organ systems and the internal aspects of family and relationships are dehydrated, fatigued, and very much in need of self-care. Hey, Adam, you just jumped on. Glad you are with me. Let's continue with the video. Okay. Marker number two, we got some bunions going on. Yes, we do. So bunions, uh, for those of you who are unfamiliar with my extensive work on bunions, you can go to the Foot Whisperer website, which is just footwhisperer.com. Click on the blog page up at the top, and there's a blog post called the Ultimate Bunion Blog Post that I wrote a couple years back. If you want more info on bunions, that's basically me telling you physical, mental, emotional, postural, structural, like everything how to fix them what i've seen work what i've seen not like go research the bunions on my website um otherwise these bunions aren't really like too severe um although we can see them clearly they aren't as nasty as i personally have seen in the past the bunions also aren't as red as inflamed as cranky and angry they're not deviating the big toe as much as i've seen they're they're there Definitely. Also, one side isn't worse than the other uh, by much. You know, when I look at the overall 
shape and structure of the feet. I, it takes a lot to impress me. And for me, marker number one being those, those lines, those waves, that dryness in zone four, that trumps this marker. But these bunions are still significant because they indicate cardiovascular pressure, the bunion area in what would be vertical zone one in line with the big toe and horizontal zone two in line with the ball of the foot represents that center of the chest. So we're focused on both, you know, the physical bone here being the sternum, the attachment of the ribs, the soft tissue of the lungs, the heart reflexes in here, but then going all the way through to uh, the mid, uh, upper mid thoracic, and then the rhomboids are in here. Uh, all of that kind of central chest area seems to be locked down building pressure uh, and that will have widespread consequences. So we really want to take some of that internal chest space and kind of smooth it and spread it out. And we'll talk about how we would do that in methods of balancing, but also the connection between this marker and the final marker, which I've been hiding. And there's a good reason for it because it's going to blow your mind. So just to recap these two markers, we have marker number one being weakness and lower GI, marker number two being the bunions, which represents kind of a pressure building in the chest. So we have this dynamic of weakness and pressure, which is very common to see in the body. This idea that one area is deficient, another area is in excess. And so through out weaving the story, we're taking the markers that we're seeing and we're going to want to counterbalance them. We're gonna to wanna to find a method of balancing that both releases the pressure from the chest space and also bolsters, supports and nourishes the lower GI. Do you see how we're doing that? Do you see how we're linking things up and building a case for that? So now let's explore the marker number three. Bam. Okay, pause for dramatic effect. This is amazing. And for those of you that know me, you know how excited I get when it comes to feet that are truly, truly profound. And this, ladies and gentlemen, is one of those pairs of feet. So let's talk about this. Up, oh, soul steps every day. Glad you found your channel. Yay, so glad you joined me. Thanks for finding us soul steps every day. Okay, marker number three. These dorsal superficial veins are an extreme water marker directly connected to fluid flow within the body, hypersensitivity, and the need for emotional self-care. Hashtag game changer. So marker number three, this is why it is so important to view both plantar and dorsal surface. Adam says, wow, what a difference from the plantar. Exactly like mind blown, Adam. Uh, so this marker number three is the game changer of this foot reading. If we were to just look at the plantar view, we would only be getting half the story. And this is ridiculous. So physically, we know that when the veins do this, there's cardiovascular system backup. There's heat in the system. There's inflammation. There's so much kind of need for proper circulation that physically, Marker number two has been validated in terms of the bunions being cardiovascular center. There's some, there's some cardiovascular pumping that needs to happen. The heart is just a little bit too taxed and the cardiovascular system is just a little bit too sluggish and pressurized. But then also horizontal zone four, okay? So lower digestive, yes, but also family and relationships. So when we think of family and relationships as being weak, Yes, but then marker number three tells us that there is uh, hypersensitivity within the body. And then the bunions tell us that there's emotional pressure. We can see that the lack of family support has caused this individual to feel very, very emotionally uh, kind of vulnerable would be the best way to say it. And some of my group members definitely picked up on that and said that in their readings. Uh, and I'm going to echo that. So when I see such a strong water marker, and we call it a water marker because it is vascular oriented, uh, this water marker I've seen time and time again when it's just on the dorsal surface like this, it's somebody who's literally thin skinned, somebody who uh, is normally very empathic, somebody who tends to cry at the drop of a hat, but you know that's not necessarily a bad thing. They're very in touch with their emotions. Their emotions are very powerful. They're also hypersensitive to stimulus. 
and are very nurturing individuals because they can feel what you feel. Now, the drawback is that the veils are thin for this person. So stimulus is going to hit them really, really hard. Um, and other people that are surrounding them, if they don't recognize this hypersensitivity, they're more likely to just write them off as an emotional mess. And that is not the case. Instead, you know, it takes all kinds. And this kind needs to be respected for their sensitivity as opposed to kind of brushed off for it. So when I see the sharp contrast between dorsal surface being very vascular and underneath actually not being so vascular, but instead that deep deficiency and that bottling up of emotions, we're starting to paint this profile of this person not being honored for their emotional state and may be told to, you know, suck it up, uh, to, you know, don't cry, to maybe bottle some of those emotions instead of their supportive friends, family, relationships, their top five, the people that they spend the most time with, uh, really nurturing and supporting and respecting their emotional state and their hypersensitivity. When we look at somebody who has a water constitution, this is definitely a great example of that. Somebody who fluid will be the major reason for both their downfall and their success, and also their emotional state will be top priority in all cases. So if we didn't see this marker on the dorsal aspect, then we would be missing probably the most significant uh, kind of glue that holds this foot reading together. We saw strong deficiency uh, in zone four and then bottled up pressure in zone two. And it, this vascular marker really brings us home to this idea that this fluid imbalance and that this hypersensitivity exhaustion due to family and relationship stress is really where the crux of this person's biodynamic issues are. So let's kind of wrap it all up and put it into succinct words in terms of physical, mental, emotional, and mental and uh, methods of balancing. Okay. So physically, there is a heavy water component to this body and the lower digestive weakness is where that imbalance is being felt the most. So kind of layman's terms, dehydration. Uh, that's going to play really heavily in this body. And this is where I said at the beginning, educate the client on constitution. If they have a watery constitution, if their body is naturally water dominant, uh, then they need to be hydrating at all times. They need to be in that constant state of moisture and flow. Otherwise their body will not physically function properly. So when I see people with these really strong water markers, uh, and this really strong hypersensitivity, I coach them all the time. Your body needs water more so than other types of bodies. If we were talking to somebody with an earth constitution, they don't need to feed or water themselves for sometimes days on end because they just hoard it all. That's their body type. They just store it so effortlessly. Water constitutions need, they need that constant state of flow. Okay. Internally, discord in family and relationships and feelings and emotions is present. Okay. So this idea that their zone four and their zone two are disproportionate. The tension that should be in zone four is not present. The openness that should be in zone two is not present. And the lack of respect for this person's innate sensitivity may be making them feel unsupported and ignored as just being over emotional which I see a lot. And as somebody personally who is hypersensitive, who has a water constitution, I know what this looks like. And I see clients like this on a regular basis. And having somebody in your corner is essential to us. People who are uh, kind of more apt to feeling things as opposed to being able to, you know, walk into a crowded room and socialize easily and, you know, not hear what everybody else is thinking and not feel what everybody else is feeling. We tend to get much more overwhelmed and we need to respect that aspect of ourselves as like priority number one, as opposed to other people who don't have that level of hypersensitivity. So big thing is for this person, 
they're trying to hide and bottle their emotions because the people around them don't understand what it's like to be kind of that watery hypersensitive constitution. So we need to educate the client on that internal state as well as the physical state, like this idea that water is okay, water is needed, and the element of water should be respected in this person's life because it seems to be uh, kind of disregarded at this point. Okay, so methods of balancing are fluid, fluid, and more fluid. Uh, three large thermoses of water or tea, along with the three major meals of the day would be very appropriate. Once self-care and self-nourishing are accomplished, then self-respect can begin to blossom and stronger relationships can be forged through mutual acknowledgement of strengths as opposed to unhealthy power dynamics. That is a very well-written of, method of balancing and totally what I would write in somebody's book reading report if they asked me to generate one for them. Um, but physically, you know, working with the fluid aspect, suggesting, hey, here's something that you can try to see if fluid really is the issue. Work with three thermoses of water or tea a day. And then on the internal aspect, once you get into the habit of respecting what you need, other people will respect what you need as well. So steps just say, uh, what do cracked heels mean? I've tried so many different things and nothing helps. We have videos on that soul steps. Uh, and then also feel free to post pictures of your feet in the group. We'd love to give you uh, not just ideas on the heels, but what may be contributing to the heels. Because just because we have a symptom in one area doesn't necessarily mean that that's the root cause, right? So that's part of this whole dynamic um, in terms of uh, especially what we're seeing here. So soul steps is talking about, hey, I have cracked heels, but then internally here, this person could have come to me for bunions. Oh, my carbonite backup just uh, flipped on the screen. Sorry about it. Um, so uh, sponsored by carbonite backup. Uh, but so when we talk about things that are connected but not necessarily uh, needed to focus on, cracked heels may have an other, uh, in another kind of foot reading aspect that may be stronger or more pronounced. Like here, this person's bunions, and maybe it was just, hey, I have these bunions, can you work with them? But we're seeing things that really the bunions are just the tip of the iceberg. So when it comes to individual symptoms on the feet, yes, I can tell you what they mean, and that might be relevant for you, but I'd really look at the whole picture. And I think that that's the meaning of this, this whole foot reading, especially today, is don't just look at one side, one symptom, one aspect. Look at the entire person, the entire foot. That's the art and science of foot reading encapsulated right there. So that's my methods of balancing the physical internal meaning, etc. cetera. Uh, let me, doo -doo -doo. there we go. Okay, so what didn't make the cut? The toes. So the toes, a lot of the group members started harping on the toes. Yes, thyroid issues. Yes, neck issues. Yes, mental encroachment. Yes, mind is too stressed. You know, yes to all of that. However, it is not a priority until we get this fluid under control. Okay, so steps, baby steps, really important to consider. We don't want to overwhelm the client with too much uh, pointed feedback. So if, if we say, oh, this is not working properly and oh that's kind of not working properly and yeah this isn't working properly either it makes them sound like they're broken and nobody's broken it's just about tweaking and changing what somebody can change and then seeing what disappears because when clients come in to see me and they're like hey what do i need to do to fix this and i'll say we can't fix this until you fix that and that's what we're really seeing here I think the toes are a secondary symptom. I think if we were to get fluid balance corrected, I think if we were to restore hydration to the gut, I think if we were to get some family relationship uh, nourishment happening and some self, uh, self-care, self-respect, I think all of that would start to unwind the toes naturally and clear up that head neck congestion as well as that mental space. Make sense? So just priorities. Um, and working with one suggestion at a time and keeping it concise so that the client doesn't feel overwhelmed. So that's what didn't make the cut. 
we could have nitpicked on other things. We could have nitpicked on the dorsal ankle too. We could have gone in multiple different directions. You heard me mention the ball of the foot at the beginning. Uh, you know, there are things that I leave out intentionally because they're either not as prominent, uh, which means they're not as important, or I feel like they're secondary symptoms that could be erased if stronger markers were taken care of first. So that's the power of focusing on your top three, okay? So that's it. That was your foot reading video. I hope that you all enjoyed it very, very much. Make sure to subscribe to the channel. Uh, join the Facebook group if you're not a member already. It's fabulous. We have lots of awesome discussions and free webinars uh, and webinar replays that you can always get through the online school. Uh, buy the book if you haven't experienced uh, or heard of or read books on foot reading already. I wrote one. It's on Amazon and Barnes and Noble. It's called Foot Reading by me, Sam Bellier. Um, but then also check out other books like Jane Sheehan, Chris Stormer, uh, Sue, uh, Sue Ricks has one, Imri Samoji, uh, so many other books out there. Foot reading is becoming more and more popular. So definitely look for other media, you know, read the blog, join the groups, start to start to play and dabble and, and educate yourself because it's fun. Um, and then stay tuned because we're always doing really awesome things here on the channel, on Facebook, and we have tons of stuff coming down the pipeline as well. So that is that. Let me just flip around my screen real quick. Do, do, do. And that is it. So I hope you all enjoyed the foot reading. Thank you um, for everybody who was playing with me in the chat. Uh, Adam, awesome. Thanks. Just picked up your book. Love it. Um, stay tuned for future videos. Everybody had uh, has great feedback and comments. And make sure to, to join the group because that's where these videos are coming from. So if you'd like to submit your feet as well, you can always email me with the info below or just submit them in the group because that's kind of where the conversation is happening. And then this is where I post the videos based on that conversation. So have a fabulous day and I will talk to y'all later. May the feet be with you in the meantime.